It'll be all timed events going on today, and it starts at 6 o'clock. I want to bring in two actual Cowboys to the shot so it looks a little bit better. What is the key with a couple games left and the Big 12 tournament for your team? Is it as simple as not getting too far ahead of themselves <laughs> and making sure they focus only on this game of West Virginia? Sloppy conditions and unpredictable weather may play against all of these teams in a sport that relies so heavily on preparation. You have some experience. You know this program well. What made this job so enticing, seeing where it is now and, and seeing what you did through those 10 years? That place has really been the kryptonite for Texas Tech football. Tech hasn't won here in Stillwater since 2001. And who was the quarterback then? Well, none other than your head coach, Cliff Kingsbury. Pete, it, it just seemed like as soon as Mahomes went down and Testaverde came in, they couldn't do anything offensively, and that showed by the statistics in the second half. Today's loss to Baylor that eliminated the Red Raiders from the Big 12 tournament is really a microcosm of their entire season. You can't be one for 15 with runners in scoring position and strand seven runners on base and expect to win a close baseball game. Welcome in South Plains sports fans. If you remember this time last year when Cliff Kingsbury took over the Tech football program, his focus was limiting the turnovers and stopping the costly penalties. This new system was supposed to be a breath of fresh air and alleviate controversy. Well, so much for that. They now must play the waiting game to see if their 31 and 24 overall record that pegged them tied for third in the Big 12 is enough to get them an at large bid into the NCAA tournament. Concept is a little bit of work each day, a little bit of water each day. You'll continue to grow, and I think the teams that win championships. Uh, understand that they continue to grow all the way through the season and even after the season's done when you win a championship. For the first time in nearly two decades, Texas Tech baseball has bloomed as Big 12 regular season champions. And a year-long motto with deep roots helped them get there. We show up each and every day and Tadlock reminds us, don't forget to water the tree, don't forget to water the tree. That's the first step into uh, doing stuff doing big things for this program and for this team. The team just kind of takes it as like, it's that's what we do every day. Like the reason we come every day is to get better every day. So we can keep playing the way we are. Whether it's, you know, just playing catch with an intent and really kind of getting that feel for it or just running each and every day, coming up here and doing what I need to do to better myself is really what Watering the Tree is all about, I would say. The motto has grown into a unique team bond, brought about a celebration you may have seen and even helped a few players brush up on their horticulture. I think it really kind of took off when we didn't really have a double sign yet, so we just kind of made it up based off of what he said. We started using it, and then he kind of caught on to what we were doing, and he would start throwing cups of water at us and stuff. One of those ones in Redwoods, I think, really huge trees, yeah, I'd say something like that. I mean, because this team, just from the, from the beginning, we've been growing at, like, fast and rapidly, you know, whether it be team chemistry or whether how we're playing. I mean, this team is bonded from the, the get-go. It is a unique bunch, and these guys have formed a bond now that they have won a Big 12 championship that will last their lifetime, and the guys have shown, you know, a unique ability to, uh, to set things aside and, and go play for each other. Now, Coach Tadlock and crew will set the Big 12 trophy aside because a program that was in the College World Series just two seasons ago knows there's much more growing left to do to reach Omaha. It means we're moving in the right direction. We're going down the right road. And we want to plan on winning championships when we're here. This group of guys has earned the right to be Big 12 champions, and, and they deserve it at this point. But I think they also know there's more there. I wasn't as concerned about the desire to fight it I was concerned about the strength to fight it, and that scared me a little bit. On January 12th, Abernathy head baseball and assistant football coach John Horn was diagnosed with stage four neuroendocrine carcinoma, a lifetime smoker's cancer developed by a man who hasn't smoked a day in his life. All the doctors, they have no idea. It's shown up in more and more people. It was quite a shock. Those are words you never want to hear. That was just crazy to us. We're like, well, I mean, he's never smoked. He's never done anything like that. And he has a lifelong smoker's cancer. A family's worst nightmare became a reality that challenged their faith and understanding. But just when things were at their worst, the comforting arms of the Abernathy community surrounded the horns in the form of a first year assistant coach who decided to give up an opportunity of a lifetime for a family in need. And I just wanted to give something much more 
worldly, I guess, more materialistic to those guys as something to hope that they could physically touch and hold on to and get excited about. Coach Brewer had two tickets to the inaugural college football playoff national championship game. And rather than witnessing the pinnacle of college athletics himself, he gave the tickets to a couple of Oregon Duck fans, John's sons, Nate and Luke. My mom called me and she said, you need to get to the hospital right now. So I was like, well, why? And she said, well, we got some good news and it has nothing to do with the cancer. So, so me and Luke, we headed over to the hospital and right when we walked in, my dad, the first thing he said, he was like, boys, this time tomorrow, y'all are going to be in AT&T Stadium watching Oregon and Ohio State. I was just shocked. I mean, got to go see my favorite team. We went to the Alamo Bowl last year and that was good, but we got to go to the national championship and first ever playoffs and Oregon was in it. I was just, I was speechless. There are so many people he could have given those tickets to. And he, he, he thought about Nate and Luke, and I, I just, you know, it just shows a tremendous character the young man has. Good protection, loops it downfield, and Marshall is wide open and running free. They will not catch him. It was awesome. Not, not one empty seat. Uh, wish we were on the Ohio State side, but it was, man, it was unreal. Just hearing their stories after the game, and hearing the excitement, and getting to have them guys, those guys show me the pictures, you know, and see their reaction, you, you just can't ask for anything better, man. Sometimes kindness can only be measured by the recipient, and a four-hour distraction in the form of a football game can mean more than the final score, especially for a family who is only just beginning a long battle that they now realize they aren't fighting alone. I always remember it and I'll always be thankful.